the number one Black Cats fan is back again. Fuck, I'm sick already. It's the third time I've tried to record this fucking video. <laughs> oh, God, yes, I'm back again. It's the first home game of the season. Before we get into it, I've got to apologise. You may hear banging, you may hear drills going off, you may hear shouting. It's because we're getting scaffolding put around the house for fucking the roof's getting done, so yeah. And the walls are getting new insulation put in. Right, now that's done for the third time. Sunderland versus Middlesbrough. The first home game of home game of the season for the third time in a row. Jesus Christ. So <laughs> What can we expect? Well, to be honest, Middlesbrough, they had a good start of the season. They deserved to win. That much you can say for sure. Bear with me. That's okay. I'm just checking, make sure there's no spiders in the room. To fly. Lovely. Um, so, yeah. Um, they deserved to win, to be honest with you. Uh, they held a good account of themselves. They played really well. To be honest, the one thing that Middlesbrough seemed to be lacking, though, is a massive amount of pace. You know, and I mean that could be concerning, especially coming up against Sunderland with the players that Moyes has signed. And this isn't me bigging up Sunderland here, not in any way. You know, I'm keeping an open mind here. Going, this is a derby match. Any fucking thing can happen. Albeit it is the smallest of derbies. You know, if you have if you have a list of uh, say the top 100 of derbies, I'd say it wouldn't even reach in the top 100 to be honest. Now for Sunderland, Newcastle would be right up there at number one, of course. You know, number bloody one. But yeah, um, so this is Sunderland's to lose, really, when you look at the whole pace of the squad that Sunderland have. The likes of Adnan Yanazai, who's really fired up under David Moyes now. Uh, and it's weird how a player can just move, even if it's just for a loan for a season. How a player can move and all of a sudden they get a spark. You know, it's, it's unbelievable to see. Lemin Kone looks finally set to stay at Sunderland, thank God. Kabul has pretty much quashed any rumours of moving to Watford. Um, to be honest, because we can't really afford to lose him. You know, we've got John O'Shea, who's 35 year old. How many more games has he got in him as a solid centre back? Not many. Cup games, maybe. Not Premier League games, I'm afraid. Sorry to say that, John, but yeah. Um, so, it's. You know, it's. Oh, it's going to be it'll be a close game. I don't think it's going to be a runaway scoreline. You know that's for sure. You know with the way Sunderland played against Manchester City, they had a massively good account of themselves. And we deserved more than just being able to score one fucking goal. That's for sure. You know we should come away from the eight he had with at least a single point. But moving on to it, could we beat Middlesbrough? Yeah, I do. But I do believe we can if he gets the selection right. If hopefully a couple of players are back from injury as well, uh, mainly Jan Kirkhoff, put O'Shea out of the squad, you know, because Kirkhoff, we know what he can do in that CDM role. Jesus Christ. He was by far one of the players of the season last season, that's for sure, but just by knocking down and hammering on in that CDM role, it's as simple as that. But um, yeah, Jermaine Defoe is going to be the big threat here, you know, getting him behind the Middlesbrough back line. Um, yeah, Middlesbrough pass and move style of football, which is good to see. It's a good old school style of football, which is nice to see. Fast and flowing. Sunderland can be the same, but also at the same point we can do the long ball up to Defoe if he gets in, times it right, behind the back line. So it's going to be a very interesting, very tight game. But I'm going to say my prediction is going to be Sunderland win it 2-0. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy though. We will have to fight for it, that's for sure. Um, so don't take anything by the scoreline. That's what I can certainly see happening. So who's going to be the man to watch? Well, you know, normally I'd say Jermaine Defoe, wouldn't I? But I'm going to have to say Adnan Yanazai. You know, bombing down the wings, cutting inside, passing intricate little through balls to make likes of Jermaine Defoe so we can latch onto them. I think that's definitely going to be uh, that's definitely going to be one to watch. And that's what I'll be keeping my eye for and all. That's for sure. Um, so, the big one, the big pre-Bellend. Who's it going to be? Well, 
after the atrocity of the Man City game, again, two in a row already this season, we've only played two, we're about to play two games, it's going to go to the referee. I believe it's Martin Atkinson as well. Conveniently, with Bobby Madley as the fourth official. Please, Atkinson, I don't care if you break your leg, break your neck, and have to come back on in a plaster cast or in a fucking some sort of spinal protection column, I don't care. Please do not get injured during this. And the same goes for the linesman, as that matter? Because Bobby Madley is fucking useless. He really is. You know, ever since that derby against Newcastle, when he gave away that penalty and that iffy red card, he's just dive bombed, isn't he? He really has. So let's just hope and pray that the linesman and the referee stay fit and healthy. Please. I'm not a believer of God, by the way, but please. Please. Oh, fucking hell. I'm actually begging the referee to stay fit. What's that about? Um, so, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. Um, so, you've got your prediction, the man to watch, and the pretty big bell end. Yeah. So, let me know what you thought of the audio, by the way, because I've switched from using this horrible thing to the microphone that's on the camera. Fucking hell, Jesus Christ. It's a day for tongue twisters. Yeah, the microphone that is on the camera uh, sounds better. So hopefully there's not going to be that sort of massive amount of fuzziness in the background because I didn't realise that this had got that bad. I really didn't. And thank you. I can't remember who it was. I think it was Gavin H maybe who commented about the microphone. So thank you, Gavin H. There's a shout out for you. Top lad, that's for sure. So I'll see you all on uh, early Sunday evening for the final whistle. Don't forget, comment below, subscribe to the channel. And bring on the fucking borough. Derby Day. Really can't wait. And neither can Minnie Mackham.